Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today we are going to talk about a very very important topic of heat exchangers when it is concerned to the interview topics. This is one of the most important topics that uh, we have certainly missed out in our past lectures. We have talked about the type of heat exchangers in general, like parallel flow heat exchanger, depending on the type of flow, type of design. We have talked about plate heat exchangers. We have talked about shell and tube heat exchangers that are common in the industry. We have talked about the type of flow that is parallel flow, uh, where uh, parallel flow, which means there, there's a co-flow, uh, also known as the co flow there is a counter flow and there is anti parallel flow uh, type of flow and uh, another is the cross flow wherein uh, the uh, flow of the hot fluid and the cold fluid are perpendicular to one another so depending on the type of flow we have discussed the uh, types of heat exchangers that are generally existing in the industry and on the design basis also we have discussed about shell and tube heat exchangers and plate heat exchangers we have discussed the plate heat exchanger in details so if you want to refer to those videos you can always refer to those uh, those are available on our channel I'm going to provide the link in the description box about the heat exchangers uh, all about the heat exchangers in generalistic detail today we are however going to talk about the recuperative versus regenerative type of heat exchangers a very important topic that are generally asked in the interview what do you mean by recuperative type of heat exchanger what do you mean by regenerative type of heat exchanger we are going to talk about that and it's going to be a short video so stay with us till the end very importantly, people do not know that recuperative type of heat exchanger means a type of heat exchanger in simple terms wherein the hot fluid and the cold fluid flow simultaneously in parallel or anti-parallel direction to each other without uh, coming in direct contact with one another. Uh, basically, when we uh, discuss the contact of the hot and cold fluid in heat exchangers, there are three types of heat exchangers in, uh, in, in basics. Uh, one is direct contact heat exchanger, wherein the hot fluid is directly mixed with the cold fluid and therein occurs a mass transfer as well as a heat transfer. So there is a direct contact, direct contact type which we are not going to discuss because those type of heat exchangers are not generally used in the industry because heat exchangers primarily uh, should include heat transfer and not mass transfer if it is a direct contact heat exchanger wherein uh, the hot fluid is made to come in direct contact with the cold fluid there is a possible or probable chance of mass transfer along with heat transfer as well and then the two medias cannot be separated from one another hot fluid and cold fluid they intermix among each other if it is so but there are certain type of heat exchange principles wherein the two fluids are completely immiscible in one another then we can undergo direct contact heat uh, exchange uh, like the case of oil and water if we uh, heat exchange oil and water that is mixed cold fluid and hot fluid just mix means we are going to interact the two the oil will float above water and will not intermix with water and that's why the oil can be separated from water and the heat exchange will occur by direct contact and direct contact has a clear advantage because it is not losing any type of heat or it is not having any type of barrier to cross, cross through whenever there is an area involved through which heat exchange is occurring like in the case of recuperative heat transfer there is a heat transfer area there is a plate suppose it in a plate heat exchanger the hot fluid is flowing like this and the cold fluid is flowing like this and there is an intermittent plate to prevent mass transfer to prevent mass transfer mass transfer not allowed but to ensure heat transfer in this case we have to ensure that the conductivity the conductivity of the plate is very high so that a high amount of heat can actually transfer from the hot fluid to the cold fluid uh, because the hot fluid is at a greater temperature than the cold fluid so clearly it depends on the heat exchange surface whereas direct contact heat exchangers are much more effective when it comes to heat exchange only because there is no barrier or boundary as such straight away the hot fluid is coming in contact with the cold fluid but the definition of recuperative heat transfer is a heat transfer method or procedure in which the hot fluid and the cold fluid flow simultaneously uh, anti-parallel or parallel to each other with a heat exchange surface in between such that the whole hot fluid never comes in contact with the uh, cold fluid and only heat exchange does occur from the hot fluid and the cold fluid. Now what is the regenerative type of heat exchanger? Recuperative is the most common type of heat exchanger as we all know that shell and tube heat exchanger is a recuperative type of heat exchanger. Uh, um, uh, plate heat exchanger is a recuperative type of heat exchanger. Most of the heat exchangers in the industry are recuperative type of heat exchangers. Now what are regenerative type of heat exchanger? Regenerative type of heat exchanger means 
that uh, uh, there is a heat exchange surface which entraps the heat of the hot fluid within itself, keeps it and then it comes in contact with the cold fluid and the heat gets transferred to the cold fluid. So very interestingly, alternatively hot fluid and cold fluid flows through the same heat transfer network where the material is primarily storing the amount of heat within itself that is given by the hot fluid and then transferring it to the cold fluid. It has a double disadvantage uh, when it comes to the regenerative type because there is a heat loss that occurs along with the hot fluid it itself because the material is perpendicular to the flow of the hot fluid in general and also when the cold fluid comes in contact with the heat matrix structure the heat transfer is not 100% effective it is about 90% effective so there is a loss in both the cases the so heat losses chances in the regenerative type is much more than the recuperative type and recuperative type is less efficient than the direct contact type so direct contact type heat exchanger has the highest amount of heat exchange efficiency for Followed by recuperative type, uh, followed by regenerative type. But regenerative type is easier to construct and easier to operate um, than this uh, particular recuperative type of heat uh, transfer. Now, what is the regenerative type? Mostly regenerative type are of basically two types: rotary, rotary, and reciprocating. Now, rotary, we are going to discuss here rotary to understand the simple case of heat exchange that is occurring in a regenerative type of heat exchanger, as we have said. Firstly, firstly, let us consider this hot fluid is flowing through the heat matrix network. This is the heat matrix, heat matrix. And as the hot fluid flows in, this heat matrix network basically stores, stores a certain amount of heat with itself. The heat is transferred from the hot fluid to the heat matrix. So the heat matrix is basically the matrix structure, the porous structure, or basically the heat storing media as we can say, stores the heat, this stores the heat and as it rotates, as it moves to the cold fluid section, the continuously coming cold fluid basically withdraws the heat from the heat matrix. So from the matrix structure. So heat matrix gives away this heat to the cold fluid. So what is happening? Firstly, hot fluid is transferring heat to the matrix. That is the porous structure. The matrix is storing the heat within itself. It rotates. It rotates. And then it gives this heat to the cold fluid. So partially the heat is being stored by the heat media or the heat matrix and then transferred to the cold fluid. So alternatively you see both the hot fluid and the cold fluid pass through the same matrix structure and there is a continuous flow, this is a continuously rotating circuit, the hot fluids come in, give the heat to the uh, heat mat to the matrix structure, to the porous structure, this rotates and goes, it comes in contact with the cold fluid, the cold fluid withdraws the heat from the heat matrix and moves out. This is a continuous procedure and it is a quick procedure. So regenerative heat transfer method can be used but less effective as the heat is being stored intermittently or intermediately if you say in a particular medium there is always a chance of losses because there is no direct heat transfer but uh, um, uh, or rather I would say a direct heat transfer is occurring but in alternative phases suppose the heat is being withdrawn from the hot media and then it is transferred to the cold media when this heat storing medium moves on to the cold fluid section. So you see similarly for the reciprocating type it is firstly withdrawing the uh, hot fluid in itself it is uh, circulating in the heat matrix network or basically the porous structure. The porous structure is withdrawing the heat uh, from the hot fluid storing and then when it moves down in a reciprocating structure the cold fluid comes in contact with that particular uh, porous structure and withdraws the heat from it. So alternative movement of cold fluid and hot fluid through the same media uh, through which the media is acting as a means of heat transfer whereas you see in hot fluid and cold fluid alternatively moving uh, parallel or anti parallel to each other just separated by a heat transfer surface which has a high conductivity is basically acting as a media to transfer direct heat from uh, hot fluid to the cold fluid though it is an indirect contact method this is also an indirect contact this is also an indirect contact but here the alternatively the hot and fluid, for cold fluid aren't moving across the same media basically they are separated by a simple heat transfer surface wherein the heat transfer is occurring continuously from the hot fluid to the cold fluid so it is a continuous procedure whereas you see 
though this is a continuous procedure but the heat that is absorbed from the hot media is transferred to the cold media after a certain point of time so there is always a lag uh, in, in, in a regenerative heat exchanger so you have understood the basic definition of a direct contact heat exchanger and the indirect contact heat exchanger direct contact is wherein the hot fluid and cold fluid come in direct contact indirect contact first type is recuperative type which is very famous in the industry shell and tube heat exchanger shell and tube plate heat exchanger these are all recuperative time wherein there is a heat transfer surface and the hot fluid and the cold fluid move simultaneously very important simultaneously and heat transfer occurs directly uh, in between the two media through a heat transfer surface they do not come in direct contact with each other but there is a constant and, uh, heat transfer occurring in between the two fluids whereas uh, the second type of indirect contact indirect contact uh, heat exchanger is regenerative type wherein further it can be distributed in rotary and reciprocating type here we are discussing the rotary type uh, the basically alternatively hot and cold fluid is flowing through the same heat transfer media so heat transfer media is first withdrawing heat from the hot fluid and then transferring it to the cold fluid i think that would conclude the uh, lecture in, for the types of heat exchanger in terms of contact direct contact and indirect contact and a very famous question that is generally asked in the interview the difference between recuperative type and regenerative type of heat exchanger uh, that's it for today if you liked it like our video share it with your friends subscribe to our channel thank you very much